Hi guys, Sarah the Bookworm here, and this is the first episode of a new series I'm doing of book reviews where I share with you some new and interesting books, or even some old and fascinating ones, just all kinds of stories that I want to put out there in the world that you, maybe you might not have heard of. So, the first book uh, that I want to share with you is called The Lucifer Principle. And this book, it isn't actually a fiction novel, it's a work of non-fiction. It is a scientific study into the forces of human history, and, well, a shorter title would be The Study of Evil. So what The Lucifer Principle is about is it's sharing with us where the origin of evil is, how, it, how a little bit of evil in, is ingrained in everything, um, and it also shows how humans are driven how we have the ability to categorize ourselves into groups and how we are able to segregate ourselves, how to separate our views. It shows how the human mind thinks when we, in all these negative ways and how it's actually natural, how we were born with this and in understanding this we can also understand how to avoid being, well, bad people. So there are five main points to this the five key concepts in the book. The concept number one is the principle of self-organizing systems. So bits of structure that organize themselves in a way that we aren't fully in control of. This is the, our nature, our biological, um, the biological assembling of raw materials and then being constructed into new things. This could happen on a um, physical way, how we evolve as a species, it could happen on a, on a mental plane, how we assemble raw ideas and influences and turn them into this new concept. There's concept number two called the superorganism, and how it describes how we are not individual organisms, we are a part of something much bigger, the human race as a whole. This super organism, it could be an empire, it could be a race of, of new people, it could be a country. It's just this one singular force, all working together, built in of many different parts. And then the third concept is the meme. And no, I don't mean those little pictures that you see on social media. A meme is a self-replicating cluster of ideas. So what I mean could be, it could be this philosophy, it could be this idealism, it could be this one key point that suddenly everyone believes in, everyone is using, it sweeps over our nation and takes over the minds of the people it touches. So again, not a meme on social media. The real definition of a meme is some one key idea or a cluster of key ideas that goes into one person's mind and then spreads to others and others until it overtakes. Concept number four is called the neural net. So the, it's a group mind, sort of like how a hive mind of bees would all think together based on one key person, one leader. It's like you remove the leader, but you're all still interconnected. So it's the way that the human mind share together. And we do, we are not segregated into one person at a time. We are all connected. And this book will show us how. It, every chapter of this book will go back to at least one of these key points and explain how we have this in our lives. And concept number five is called the pecking order and we all know that, how the strongest survive, how we uh, decide authority, how we know who is above and who is below. It's basically how we decide who's more important and who isn't. To the group. So it's all the matter of who has the power over the others, who's the strongest, who's the smartest, who is the highest up. And in our terms of humans, sometimes it's also who's the richest. So there are many different types of arguments in this book to, the, to back its points. There are biological arguments, there are, and it's not just human, it also ties back to the animal kingdom and how it, we are not the only ones who are capable of, say, evil, as we call it. There are psychological arguments, how the human mind operates, how it changes the world around us, and how Sometimes when we think of something, it will also change our body to suit said thing. It will change the hormones in us, which will change our body and how we are built and how we act. We could be submissive or dominant, depending on the circumstances that we are placed in. 
And then there are plenty of historical arguments, real life arguments of seeing this firsthand in person with a number of different scientists doing a number of different studies and then many different historical events that have actually come to pass and not many that you would hear of. A lot of them are very bloody, I will admit to that, they are very violent, but not all of them are. Some of them are just oddly fascinating or something you've never heard of before and I was fascinated by this book. I absolutely loved it myself. I do have a bit of a darker sense of humor to be honest, so I... but this book, the writer is trying to be funny. He's trying to be light-hearted even though he's describing blood and war and cannibalism and all this stuff that uh, violence everything because it is he's trying to describe the forces of human nature and a lot of the forces of human nature are violent they are primal it depends on our simple nature of who's the best who's the strongest who's the smartest and then it, it expands into how these singular ideas can sweep across an entire nation of people there's an entire section of the book describing the rise and fall of empires and how certain inventions made countries more powerful than other countries just because of how they operated and how they thought and whether or not they were smart enough to stay on top. So it's not just evil, this book, really. It's about evolution. It's about how we move forward as a species. It's about how we've evolved, how we haven't, what's remained the same and what's fallen apart. And to top it all off, like I said before, it is, I have found it very funny. Um, maybe you, you don't have such a dark sense of humor or, or a dry wit sense of humor because that's what it is. It's more lighthearted talking about, oh, this happened and that happened and it's little commentary because it's almost like the writer of this, this book, this uh, thesis or as you would say, is trying to talk to you. He's not just written something down on paper and he's talking to a massive audience, he's talking to the singular reader themselves. He's trying to connect with the person who's reading the book. And I thought that was incredible because you don't honestly get that a lot in nonfiction books. So I would definitely 100% recommend this book to you guys. You could probably find it in the library. You might find it on a second hand online or something. Maybe Amazon would have it. I don't know. I got this copy from my mother, so I've never actually had to look it up. Um, but I would, I hope you guys check it out. I hope you think about what I've said because it is, it is something to expand your mind. It's one of those books that just makes you go, wow, I never thought of this before, but it makes so much sense. So that's all for now, you guys. Uh, don't forget to check me out on Twitter at Right Sarah Regat, and uh, I'm on Instagram as well. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button to so, so find out more about these books that I have. And uh, I will see you guys next time. So have fun and go read a book. Bye.